Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal, your Marrow General Surgery faculty. And it's an absolute honor to be introducing Dr. Kirtana, who secured rank five in the recently conducted INICT exam. Hardiest congratulations, Dr. Kirtana. I mean, I think so. No better way to start off the Diwali festivities than to get such a great rank, right? Definitely, sir. Thank you so much. And congratulations to your parents as well. We were just talking to them. I'm sure they must be super proud of you. So yeah. uh, why don't you tell us something about yourself, Dr. Keetna? Where are you from? And uh, uh, I'm originally from Chennai, Tamil Nadu. And uh, I'm currently doing my internship in Ames, New Delhi. So I think the so first attempt, and I think so your batch has probably secured five or six of the top 10 ranks. So uh, extremely uh, studious and intelligent batch. Congratulations to all of you. Um, you, you've been a Plan C user. Um, please tell us about your journey with Marrow uh, ever since you purchased the plan. Uh, sir, I've been using Maru Plan C since my third year, which is when I uh, started to seriously, uh, you know, think about preparing my notes for uh, PG, mm -hmm. uh, the entrance. So uh, in third year, I made sure to complete all my notes by the end of the year, at least once, like watch all the videos. Um, and in fourth year or final year, I basically uh, completed whatever was left out, whatever uh, gaps were there, and uh, I revised those notes in addition to whatever textbook uh, notes I was reading. So uh, third year is when you took Plan C, and third year you did the videos of uh, third year and final year, or even yeah. first and second year? Uh, I did just the clinical uh, subject videos. I did not do the videos for first and second year. I started off in third year and did all the clinical subjects of third year as well as fourth year. Fine. So you watch all the clinical videos from Marrow that is third and fourth year and you try to do fourth year subjects also in third year as much as you could. Whatever was left, you left it for the final year. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Now, along with these uh, videos, um, were you also doing the QBank uh, side by side? Uh, for the clinical uh, subjects, yes, I tried to finish. Uh, if not in my third year, I uh, was finishing the QBank modules by uh, the end of my fourth year postings. So before the holidays for uh, the final professional exams were, uh, you know, out, uh, that was when I finished all the clinical subject uh, QBank modules. So by the end of uh, final year, you'd also done the QBank modules of uh, the clinical subjects as well. Yeah. So um, when you watch these videos of third year and fourth year, any particular faculty whom you could connect with who had a lasting impact on your preparation? So uh, you know that you are one of them. So uh, I really like the surgery videos, uh, the medicine videos, and... Um, the OBSGYNI videos as well. They are uh, really good. OBSGYNI is very extensive and that's both a pro and a con, but nevertheless, they are uh, all very, really nice. Perfect. Right. What subjects are you planning to uh, take up with uh, such a great rank now? Uh, I'm actually planning on taking up ophthalmology. I like it a lot and uh, I'm not really able to choose between whether I want to go into a medical specialty or a surgical specialty. So this sort of combines both. And right. it uh, offers me a bit of work-life balance. And my mother is also an ophthalmologist. So uh, she Excellent. she loves the field. So she's recommended it a lot to me as well. I think so. it's, it's great work-life balance and best of both the worlds, medical and surgical. So good, yeah. good choice. Right. Um, Talking about first and second year subjects, uh, how did you prepare those? Did you read standard textbooks during first and second year? And when did you solve the Q bank for the first and second year subjects? Uh, so first and second year, I was, uh, I did not think about PG at all. So I was reading all the standard textbooks in names. Uh, we read the textbooks that our seniors recommend uh, for us to read so mostly would you, they're mind, all would you mind highlighting them for the benefit of others please uh for example if you take an anatomy 
so for the exams we used to read bdc but in general uh, we used to read the student uh, grades okay. and uh, i used to actually uh, do my anatomy with bdc plus a bit of grades plus uh, netters atlas so i found that combination to be uh, really good and sometimes for a few topics snells Mm -hmm. not not for too many just when i didn't understand uh, it from the other textbooks sure. and for uh, physiology we used to read uh, genong and the guyton and for biochemistry it used to be harper and lippincott right pretty much so, what we used to do when yeah. we were in first year and right. in second year uh, pathology robins robins is an absolute beauty of a book it is uh, I, 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 I just love that book, and I've read it uh, a lot of times, and I still remember stuff from that book that I do not remember from my mm -hmm. clinical year subjects, even though I've left it a long time ago. I would completely agree with you, and I think so that uh, you know, if if somebody asks me, is it important to read a medicine book? I would say medicine you can probably skip, but you cannot skip reading Robbins, and I, that's, that's an true. absolute must for all undergraduate students. Yeah, uh, pharmacology actually. Um, I tried reading standard books, but uh, in the end, I used to come down to notes and uh, sure. stuff. Initially, I used to read KD Tripathi uh, and a bit of Kadzam review, not the main Kadzam. Uh, but towards the end, it used to boil down to notes. And uh, for My microbiology, we actually have really good microbiology classes in Ames. So most of uh, the micro that I learned was from the class slides. So we used to read that for our exams. So just to summarize, first and second year, you did uh, standard textbooks, a mixture of standard textbooks, uh, notes, and your class uh, notes, uh, which were held at Ames. And uh, in third year, you took up Marrow Plan C. You finished most of the subjects in third year, whatever was left in fourth year. And by the end of fourth year, you had done all videos and Q bank of the final, uh, final and pre-final year subjects. Um, I actually did not have the time to do my pre-clinical uh, subject Q bank, mm -hmm. uh, but I used to solve a few of them. I did not complete all of it um, because I got serious only in third year about the preparation. Uh, but I don't think it uh, has mattered as much. Right, so I, I, yeah. solid, sorry, you were saying something. No, no, no. You can continue, sir. Uh, so I'm saying a solid foundation, a solid background, which is what we tell everyone that by the end of final year, if you've done the videos, if you have notes of all the subjects, if you've done the QBank of majority of the subject, in internship, your job becomes much, much easier because you just have to revise all that and you just have to reinforce facts. So um, now, once your internship started, Dr. Keith, you know, how did you go about uh, things then? Um, so during my internship was when I started to, uh, you know, try and consolidate everything. And in the initial few months, uh, I was actually preparing for my uh, USMD step one, which I gave. Uh, so that uh, also covered a lot of what was being uh, asked in uh, the pg entrance as well and it was super conceptual so that i think helped a lot i gave my exam in um, april uh, and so before that i'd sort of done first year subjects and second year subjects and a little of uh, the clinical ones like derm derma psyche uh, whatever was asked uh, on the step exam so, so did that, you also you, uh, use first aid for your preparation? Yes. And do you think that first aid helped you for your INICT exam as well? Yes. I, I think a lot of the mnemonic devices that are given in first aid uh, and the way the questions are uh, given, uh, designed in uh, UWorld, they both really, you know, hammer a few things that are often forgotten um, if you've not read those. Uh, if you've not prepared for MLE or if you've not read first. 
but just for the benefit of uh, others, Dr. Keetan, I've also used first aid for preparation of my USMLE exam. But um, one thing which I would like to point across is that just first aid is enough, not enough until unless you add more points to it and you revise it multiple times. Would you agree with that? Yes, first aid is definitely not. Uh, uh, it I wouldn't say it is necessary and it is definitely not sufficient. It's just a good aid. Uh, it is not something that you miss out on a few things, but not much. Uh, and it's not like if you've done that, your preparation is just set. It's That is not true. The only subject where I feel that might be true is actually biochemistry. Biochemistry in first aid is uh, really, really good. So that was my main source of preparation for uh, biochemistry notes. Uh, I used to add little stuff uh, to first aid. And in the end, also, that was my source for revision for biochemistry. So as Dr. Keithana said, it's not a must to do first aid. If you're doing it, please add points to it. Revise it just as a solitary resource. Probably for biochemistry, she said it, it is sufficient. But for others, you need to individualize it to your needs if you're using it as a uh, aid for your preparation. Uh, so, uh, fine, uh, you mid of internship, you had uh, revised your first and second year subjects because of your step one, and you were doing the Q bank. Um, le let's talk about test series now. Uh, in inter when did you start appearing for grand tests? So, uh, this was in May. Towards the end of May was uh, because I had given my step in April, I sort of needed a break. And then uh, in May, I restarted uh, my preparation. And towards the end of May, I gave my first GT. And uh, since then, whenever Maru has been organizing grant tests, I have been giving them. So you were following the frequency which was there in Maru, and you yes. started in May during your uh, internship. Uh, what yes. was your rank initially? And um, again, I would want to know a detailed journey of your GTs. Was there? ever a situation where you thought your performance stagnated if yes how did you circumvent that problem how did you you know um get above it and make sure that your the curve was going up um i think uh, around may i had already uh, covered a lot of the syllabus the first and second year and i remembered a lot from my final professional exams because I had read uh, stuff for my professionals as well as the Maru notes for my professionals. Uh, so my preparation was sort of complete in a way uh, around May. So by the time I gave my first GT, my first rank, I think, was within top 10. It was, I think, around 8. So uh, since then, a couple of it's always been around that range. A couple of times it uh, went down to around 20 and uh, the last few grant tests, it was again within 10. So as I was discussing with the rank one, sometimes when you get such a great rank in your first GT, uh, you you uh, you know have that um, sense of expectation that you're going to do well in each uh, test. And if, you, if your rank drops a few uh, places, you become anxious. I mean, is that true? And if yes, I mean, how do you deal with it? Um, that is definitely true. But I think the way uh, to deal with that is by just working harder and uh, just revising a lot more and getting back at it. I mean, there's no other way to go about it. And were you doing your GT revisions or GT analysis the same day or the next day? Or you used to give a gap? Uh, I used to do it. Uh, try and do it as much as possible on the same day and if it's spilled over then the next day okay. I used to give I a lot of time to my GT review uh, because I used to go through each and every question explanation not just the ones that uh, I got wrong uh, it used to take me about 6-7 hours to go through one GT I used to write down points as well from the GTs sure so you were doing all the questions um rather than uh, the you know the traditional format of just doing the ones that were wronged or guessed correct you were doing all of them yeah okay fine so uh, like we've discussed previously i think so there are multiple approaches to gt one thing is common a common theme is that all toppers 
revise and analyze their gts thoroughly either on the same day or the next day not beyond that but some revise all the questions whereas others just go for the wrong ones and the guess correct ones so that's up to you but make sure that you're doing the analysis uh the q bank uh, dr kirtana you said most of it the clinical part was done by the end of final year and whatever was left during internship for first and second year um can you tell us about the bookmarks were you using the bookmark tags if yes how did you utilize them for your revision and for analysis um i did bookmark but i think i over bookmarked a lot uh, so i couldn't really revise all of them towards the end so towards the end i uh, focused more on the previous year questions and the bookmark yqs uh, and in the custom modules i used to get um, a mix of pyqs as well as the uh, non pyq questions so that was how i revised whatever was in the q bank uh, i did not have the time to go through the entire q bank bookmarks again okay now that you've mentioned about uh, pyqs uh, again a very straightforward question which i'm asking all toppers that if a student decides to do only pyqs and pyts do you think it is enough to get a top 500 rank in inic yes or no top 500 that would be a yes if they are religiously doing all the previous year topics then definitely within the top 500 okay right so i've asked this question from two uh, students the first rank and the fifth rank first rank said probably no fifth rank said probably yes so you have two clear different answers there but they are again stressing on one point it's just not only pyqs you have to do topics thoroughly yeah. as well around it to get a good rank you would agree with that dr kirtan yeah just the pyqs will not get you anywhere near 500 perfect all right now um with the recent uh, change in the pattern which was just announced 4 days back did it uh, caught you off guard and um i mean how did you deal with it in the last 4 days uh, how did you go about uh, you know uh, you know modifying your strategy for the exam um my strategy was to just look at each uh each 45 minutes as a separate exam and just keep you know going through uh four different exams so i don't know why they brought about that change uh and they didn't even give us any breaks in between so there was really no point but they did and so this is how i coped with it one uh block at a time okay perfect right uh, was this exam a bit different from the uh, other inicet exams uh, the last few years inicet in terms of the questions the number of pyqs and the difficulty level um i'm not very sure about how this paper compares uh, with respect to the previous question papers but um i would say that there were really no extremely tough questions this time but there were a lot of tricky questions and some questions that were just made to confuse the students like the vacutano question uh, some which is blatantly really really confusing contradictory so i felt the proportion of such questions was a lot more than uh, the usual papers but there were no extremely tough questions uh and the ones that were i think a little tough were mostly factual if you read them or uh, read the topic then you would be able to get them mostly it How was just questions did you attempt uh, dr yetna uh i attempted 197 questions and how many did you think you would have got correct i think i would have gotten around 160 Okay, so I mean that's a good indicator for all of you who are watching this that the number of attempts have to be more than ninety percent if you want to stand a good chance of, you know, of getting a good rank. And uh, according to Dr. Kirtana, she would have got around one sixty, one sixty-five. Correct, uh, Dr. Kirtana. If I may ask, did you appear for the mock test, INICT mock? And if yes, what was your rank in that uh, test? Uh, yeah, I did appear. I think it was eight. 
Okay. So it correlates well with your GT performance and mm -hmm. uh, your mock tests. So that is another big uh, reason why you should appear for all these mock tests. And for the GTs, it gives you a good indicator where you stand. And if you do that a month or so before or 15 days before, you know, you can do your, you can tweak your revision in the end to uh, help you get a better rank. Uh, moving on to revision, Dr. Kirtana, last 15 to 20 days, what did you do to revise for the exam? Uh, the last 15 to 20 days, uh, I had uh, really good notes for a few subjects. So for such subjects, I st stuck to my own uh, prepared notes. But for subjects in which I uh, could not really go through the entire you know, voluminous notes, uh, uh, for a lot of other subjects, my main notes, I could not really go through all of that. So in that way, I think Maro's uh, 6.5 revision notes were very helpful. They were uh, revisable in a day uh, or less than a day. So that was very useful towards the end. So because you've done Maro videos, so then just doing the 6.5 revision notes, you did not watch the videos, I but you, not have you for the videos. read the notes. And you got the flow because it was the same faculty who was uh, doing the notes and you could do them in a much uh, faster manner. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Right. So uh, any other thing which you would like to add, Dr. Kirtana, which, uh, you know, which can be of help to uh, users who are listening to this interview? Um. I think throughout your MBBS, what you do really matters. Uh, there are a lot of people who say, uh, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can just, you know, put in all of your work in the last, uh, say, four or five months and get a really good rank. That might be true, but the effort that you need to put in, the, uh, in that little time is going to be a lot more if you've not been consistent throughout your MBBS. But if you have been consistent, if you have read uh, all the standard textbooks, uh, and if you have uh, notes for your final year subjects, which uh, are revisable, then that puts you in a much better state and you can crack the exam with uh, much lesser effort. I think so. You've summed it up beautifully that uh, it, it's, it's about consistent effort uh, in all the years of MBBS, which culminates uh, into such a good rank. And uh, like you said, if you want to achieve this right towards the end, you'll have to put twice or thrice the effort, which uh, a consistent uh, you know, student would need to put in. Um, and I also want to know about discipline. I mean, how disciplined were you during internship when it came to preparation? Because that's that's something which students uh, don't talk about. Um, so, so, so can you just run through briefly your time schedule, even on a day when you had to go to the clinics? Um, it the posting uh, the postings timings really varies across which department uh, we're posted in at Ames. So uh, during our uh, village postings, which are the most hectic for us, so that is when your day gets over around 5 or 5.30. Uh, some days you are uh, on call for 24 hours. So that day you really can't do anything. So whenever it ends, um, I made sure that as much as possible, I would allocate a few hours of study. So it might not always be possible. And uh, I'm obviously after something that ends at uh, five, you're probably going to have around three hours of study, productive study. And if your day ends at nine or 10 PM on other days, so then you're probably going to put in like half an hour or one hour, but put in that time. And if you have Let's let's assume that the day ends at five. Uh, how would you divide it uh, into revising notes versus doing questions? Um, so uh, I did not have a specific schedule saying mm -hmm. I would allocate this much time for my notes and this much time for my questions. It was more like a checklist. So I had to do this. So however uh, much time uh, and whenever that was possible, I used to do it. So 
it was it wasn't exactly two hours for this and one hour for that it was more like i have to get this done i have to get that done i have to do questions and i have to revise a bit of notes so that was my checklist so and uh, primarily uh, determining i mean how many days per subject was that the defining factor of the checklist or i mean uh, that this is what... basic idea of how long it would take depending upon the uh, size of the notes and uh, the number of questions in the modules so towards the end during internship i mostly focused on pyqs i did not uh, focus much on solving uh, the entire qbank modules uh, i focused on the pyqs and uh, other times it used to just be custom modules so it wasn't really qbank specific so uh, i had to get all of those things done and so i knew how much time a module would take so depending upon that i would just allocate my my time so dr geetan i mean all of us think that you know we can finish the subject in, in the stipulated amount of time but uh, sometimes we um, we are unable to do that and it uh, overshoots the time period which we've allocated for that subject what would you do in such a situation would you give yourself 2 3 4 days extra for that subject or would you move on to the next subject and that's a very common problem with students encounter so i would want your uh, views on that um the first step to uh, sort of mitigating this problem is uh, for you to have a few buffer days so when you plan uh, say you want to break 10 days into uh, days of study so you'll probably do like 8 days of allocation to different subjects and one or two days of buffer time in case something uh, that you cannot predict happens so that is one thing that uh, has to be done i think that is useful and the other thing if uh, that happens if it spills over then uh, i think just before it spills over you'll sort of have an idea that okay this is not getting over in this much time so you have two options sort of rushing through uh, the subject so that you can complete it or doing a part of it well and leaving the rest uh, for pg preparation i think coverage of the subject is very important so even if you rush through and finish as much as you can in the stipulated time and uh, that will be more effective than just focusing on a few topics and uh, leaving the rest uh, just untouched great so so i think so thank you very much dr keetana you you've brought about um, i i love your approach it's it's a very simple but an effective approach uh, which has brought about a great rank uh, and you know you've uh, touched on some practical issues and how you dealt with them during uh, preparation uh before we end um, any particular feature of the maro app which which you like a lot uh, specifically on the tech or the uh, the user interface side because you know the tech team works very hard they always behind the scene but it's always it always is good uh, you know when they hear a uh, few words about the ui so any uh, particular feature which you liked the entire ui is one of maro's uh, big plus points it is what differentiates it uh, a lot from the other platforms that uh, are there out there and uh, i really like the feature of custom modules and the bookmark feature um i also uh, like the pearls feature and uh, i like how you know mini tests keep popping up uh on your screen when you open the app so even if you did not want to attend that test you just like okay it's just maybe 10 15 minutes of my time let me do that sure perfect so thank you very much dr ketana i think so um so late in night you've spent such valuable time um thank you very much and please enjoy uh, the festivities with your family please congratulate your parents from our side as well thank you thank you so Happy Diwali to you. It was a you pleasure talking to you. Likewise, likewise. Good night. Good night.